Hi everyone, and welcome to my tutorial on debugging binary files with HexEdit's template system. This tutorial is primarily meant for programmers who have files that they think may contain errors and wish to investigate them further. In this example, I've created a small C program that creates a file that may be buggy. In other cases, you may have received a file from an external source and you want to check it. So let's have a quick look at the program. It's a very simple program that sets up some map data and then saves that data out to disk. The map data is stored in three simple structures. The map struct holds the number of roads and a collection of roads. The road struct holds the number of houses, the name of the road, and a collection of houses. And the house struct stores the house number, the owner's name, and the number of floors in that house. The saving of the data is pretty straightforward. It creates the file, writes out a header, a number of roads, and then just iterates over all the roads, writing out the data, and then iterates over the number of houses in that road and writes out the data. Very straightforward. The file that this creates should have the following structure. The file starts off with a header of seven bytes, which is the string header, followed by a null terminator. Then an unsigned integer of the number of roads. Then we have a collection of roads. Each road having the number of houses as an unsigned integer. The road name as a null terminated 16 character. Then after that we have a collection of houses. Uh, the house number as an unsigned int, the owner name as 16 characters, the number of floors as another unsigned int. Obviously this will repeat to the number of houses we have and this data will repeat again and again for each road. So we've run the program and for one way or another we found out that the file it's created is faulty. We've gone through the code several times and we can't find anything wrong. So let's now see how HexEdit, a freeware piece of software, can help us determine the error. To start out, this looks like any other hex editor, and we could already start to use this to debug our file. But if anyone's tried this, you already know that this is not a very easy process, and it's easy to get lost in the file. This is where hex edits templates come in. The basic idea is to define the structure of your file so that you can see the individual components separately. So let's create a new template. Now we can see the template view on the left. It's open in what's called designer mode. It has a tree structure showing the metadata for our file. Let's right click on the default node and start creating our metadata by selecting edit. This is the top level node for our file so I'll just rename it test file. Then we need to define what elements this test node has underneath it. So let's check our format document. The first thing in our file is a header of 7 bytes. So let's add that to our metadata. I'll delete this dummy node, then we'll insert a new data element. We'll call it header, set its type to string, and set its length we know to 7 characters. Let's try this out already by pressing OK. Now this error message is in fact very useful. 
it's telling us that our file is longer than our metadata predicts, which is of course what we expect because we've just put the header in so far. Now, if you go over to our template view and expand our test file node, we can see our header entry and under data, it says header, the correct value. So let's add the rest of our template. We'll edit the test file again. Checking our doc, the next entry is the number of rows and it's an unsigned integer. So let's insert a new data entry. We'll call it number of rows. It is of type integer. The format is, is unsigned and the length is four. Okay. If we go back and have a look at our doc now, we see next we have a collection of rows. For that, we can insert a for loop. We'll call it roads. Now this is a nice bit. For the count, we can actually refer to our previous elements. So we can select number of roads for the count. Loops must have elements defined that exist inside that loop. So we'll do that by adding a structure for our roads. I'll call it road. Checking back to our document, the first thing inside a road is the number of houses and it is a unsigned integer. So we'll add that as a data member. Number of houses, an integer, unsigned, so that's four. Next is road name, 16 characters. So road name, string, 16 characters followed by a collection of houses. So we need to add another loop. Call this houses. We can say that this is the number of houses. And then we'll need to define a structure for what the loop contains, the house. Inside the house, we have a house number, which is an unsigned int. So we'll add house number. Integer unsigned. Oh. Followed by the house owner, a string of 16 characters. Insert data, house owner, string of 16 characters, and finally the number of floors as another unsigned integer. Insert data, number of floors, integer unsigned. Okay. So let's OK all these dialog boxes. Now this is an interesting error. As we've defined our metadata now, it should be telling us the length of the file, but the actual file length on disk does not match what's defined in our metadata. So this is telling us that there is something wrong. Let's press OK. Now we can see all our lovely metadata appearing. But when we start to have a look at it, there are some crazy values going on here. House number, four trillion, road name, gobbledygook, number of houses, seven million, 
So there's definitely something wrong. Let's expand road number zero. Uh, now these values look correct. That's interesting. Let's open up houses. Let's have a look at these houses. Well, our first house, house number one, owner Fred, number four is two, that looks correct. Next house, house number two, owner Jim, number four is three, I think that's correct. Uh, next one, house number four, long road, that doesn't sound quite right. And the next one, oh, it's got crazy values. But that's weird. After the first two houses, it starts to look a bit suspicious. This is giving us a good clue of what's going on. Having a look at our format document again, well, there's our first house with owner Fred and two floors. And there's our second house with Jim and three floors. But wait a minute. We've said there are two houses here. Let's have a look. Number of houses should be two. Looking back at hex edit, we can see that there appears to be four houses here. Let's have a look. Number of houses, four. Number of rows, four, that's correct. But number of houses, that should be two. So this is pointing to exactly where our problem is. So if I quickly have a look at our code in the save map function, let's have a look. We open a file. We write header, number of roads, that should be correct. Gets a number, number of roads, writes it out, that looks good. We go into a loop for our roads, we get the road, and here is where we write the number of houses out. So number of houses, yes. Write the num, ah, there we have it. number that's correct but here the value we're writing out has a lowercase n which is the number of roads not the number of houses there's our problem i'll recompile the program good no errors then i will rerun the program And let's go back to hex edit to see what we've got. Well, we open the file. And notice there was no error message about the file being too long. That's a good sign. We can open up our test file. There's the header, number of rows four. That's correct. There are four rows. Let's open one of them up. Number of houses two. Correct. There's Bridge Street. Let's have a look at the houses it's got. It's got two houses. There they are. Let's have a look at the next row, just in case. Row two, long road. Excellent. We fixed it. Now, obviously, this was a very contrived, simple example, but hopefully you can see how useful this templating system can be for debugging your binary files. Hope you found that helpful. Thanks very much. Bye.